Hey guys, it's Jason with Tyndale. I'm the lead safety and technical trainer here. Welcome back for another installment of the 70E Made Easy. Today we're going to talk about Article 130.1. 130 is when it starts getting great, in my opinion, uh, for 70E geeks like myself. Uh, it starts getting good now, so stay tuned here. This, of course, is the scope section for 130. 130 is around 70 pages of information to help you work safely while energized. In other words, 130 addresses the situation when exposure to electrical hazards are justified, which we determine it is almost never, remember? This also includes when you are creating an electrically safe work condition. Remember that NFPA 70E and OSHA regulations require first and foremost that your equipment be de-energized unless it's operated under a normal condition, which we've also already talked about in, in a previous video. First, let's determine what working on something energized means. Working on, per the definition, if you intentionally contact anything energized with any part of the body, with any tool or probe, regardless of the PPE, you are considered to be working on energized, right? In 130.2, we will talk about a couple of different examples or types of working energized, which would include diagnostic and repair, and now that applies to the energized electrical work permit. 130 is going to define some of the safety-related work practices, assessments, precautions, and procedures when an electrically safe work condition cannot be established. 130 also tells us that when we are working on energized parts, operating at or above 50 volts and in a normal condition in 110.2b, you have to do a few things. Number one, only qualified people shall be permitted to work on anything that has not been put into an electrically safe work condition. Real important, we've kind of talked about qualified and what that means in previous videos. Number two, you need to fill out an energized electrical work permit. We're going to get into that in great detail in the next video for 130.2. Number three, you shall complete an electric shock risk assessment. We will talk about this in the video for 130.4. It's going to be pretty detailed. It'll probably be several videos actually for that one. Number four, you have to complete an arc flash risk assessment. We're going to get into that in a future video in 130.5. Again, that, one, that one's probably going to be several videos as well. To be clear, even if you've had a professional incident energy study or you have utilized the tables method, you are still required to walk through these steps, right? Very important. Working energized is not to be taken lightly and should be avoided at every cost, all cost, every cost. Industries have grown very complacent about this as well as pressuring employees to work energized. They feel it's justified and it's absolutely costing lives out there, right? So until next time, stay safe out there.